The theme of today is how to bring uh, order out of disorder with mathematics. And this is done in the way that mathematics can make sense of randomness. So you're going to look at some random experiments, i.e. experiments that involve random variables. And from them, we'll derive some very accurate predictions. One of them will be of pi. It's this ability to bring order out of disorder that makes mathematics so very useful uh, in the real world. So to begin with, um, the, the thing that we're going to be looking at is called Buffon's needle experiment. And in this experiment, we use a, a piece of paper, uh, something like, like this. Um, and in this piece of paper, we have a, a needle, right? And the idea is that this piece of paper has lines evenly spaced, uh, and they are spaced by exactly twice the length of the needle, okay? And you can have as many lines as you want, uh, any size needle, any size piece of paper. And we're going to take this needle and throw it at a piece of paper randomly so I don't look at where it's going. And we then check whether the needle is crossing the line or not crossing the line. And you keep doing this. And we're keeping doing this for a long, long, long time. Uh, you'll find a quicker way to do it in a moment, okay? Now, it turns out that the ratio of the number of times we throw a needle in, the number of needles, divided by the number of crossings is a very good estimate of this quantity pi. However, there are some problems doing this by hand. The first one is um, I'm human, I'm not a machine, and therefore my actions are not truly random. The second one is I'm going to lose count because we want to do this thousands of times. In fact, during this lecture, we're going to do it a million times, again and again and again, but not by hand, okay? So instead of this, what I'm going to do is, is to share the screen and I'm going to uh, use a computer, right? And in this computer, I'm going to share a figure. You should be able to see a figure which looks a bit like a piece of paper with lines. Uh, can you see that, Andrew? Yes, we can. Okay. So this figure represents a piece of paper and I'm going to throw a needle into it. Now you should be able to see a needle arriving in it. Uh, one needle by itself is not very helpful. So we throw another one and another and another and another and another until we get to 10 to begin with. And you can see that now that we have uh, 10 needles, uh, the proportion of crosses is 3.333. That's because we have 10 needles and three of them cross. There's one at the top Okay, so that gives an estimate of pi, not a very good estimate, of course. And uh, so we're gonna do it a bit more, but this time I got 50 needles, right? That's what 50 needles look like on a piece of paper. And the proportion of crosses uh, divided into the number of needles is 3.125. And if you really wish, you can count, I don't recommend it. Um, so we'll go again and we'll do a hundred needles and of course, uh, we're getting a proportional error, which is smaller and smaller and smaller, and then perhaps a thousand needles. So that's what a thousand needles look like. Something you always want to know, I'm sure. Okay, now a thousand needles is a pretty big number and the accuracy of um, estimating pi is still not very good. So it looks like this experiment is not as all that's cracked up to be. So, well, let's do it for real. A million times over, well, actually, in order to spare uh, your eyes, uh, I've only plotted 5,000 needles, but actually I've done this a million times. And if you look at the proportion of crosses into the proportion, into a million, the number of needles, you get 3.1425, which is okay, but it's not really brilliant. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to um, do it, uh, but, do this, this a million times, but instead of showing you the needles, I'm going to show you the estimate of this number, which is the ratio of the total number of needles divided by the number of crosses, okay? And you'll notice that what I'm showing you here is um, a logarithmic scale, okay? So being a logarithmic scale means that one corresponds to 10 needles, two to 100, 
three to a thousand, four to ten thousand, five to hundred thousand, and you've guessed it's six to a million. So this number is converging. So I've just done one experiment with a million needles, okay? And just to make sure that the effect that I get is not totally chance based, I'm going to do it again. So I got, you know, I'm genuinely throwing random numbers. This experiment is running live, the code is running in real time. Uh, and I wrote the code, so I, I know exactly what it's doing. So I'm going to do it again and again and again and again and keep doing this. I'm going to do it about a dozen times, okay? So what you notice is that after quite a large number of needles being thrown, somewhere around after about 100,000, the estimate of pi gets pretty good. And by the time you get to a million, the estimate of pi is really properly good. Uh, and the value of pi, the exact value of pi is shown as a horizontal line, okay? So what we've been able to show here is that by throwing needles onto a piece of paper, we are able to produce a very good estimate of, of pi, okay? So that is the experiment. What is the theory, okay? To show you the theory, uh, I'm going to uh, share another screen. And this gentleman, very distinguished looking gentleman sitting there is Comte de Buffon. Uh, he was, he lived in the 18th century, as you can tell, and he was a French aristocrat with the title of Count, so he's Count of Buffon. His uh, actual number was uh, Georges Louis Leclerc, and he's credited with having created this experiment we just did, uh, which is considered to be the first proper simulation in mathematics, long before computers had been invented, okay? So now let's look at the theory. So here's a picture of the piece of paper. And this is where I hope that my tablet's going to work, okay? So I have in the middle of that piece of paper picked up on a needle and yes, and I've indicated a triangle. I'm going to use that needle and that rectangle triangle, right? as a way to explain to you the theory, which involves some integrals of why Buffon's needle experiment works. But I agree with you, that triangle is tiny. So let's expand it, okay? So now you've expanded it, but you know what that triangle is, and that's the center of the needle. So because that's the center of the needle, notice that uh, that's the center of the needle. The needle is of length one. The gap between the lines is of length two. So this bit of the needle is of length one half. Right? Okay, so we have a rectangle triangle. So here's your 90 degree angle. So you can feel very comfortable in that home. Now, I'm sorry to go back again, but I want to show you one thing. The bit that's really interesting is this distance D here, because uh, that is the side that de determines whether or not this needle is going to cross the line. It's the, the ratio, if you want, between this distance here and the distance from the center of the needle to the line, that's going to determine whether the needle crosses the line or not. So I promise I won't be going backwards and forwards anymore. So at this point, we're going to do some standard, in fact, GCSE maths, okay? So we know there's a relationship between D and theta, and that's to do with a basic trigonometry. Opposite, which is a D over hypotenuse is the sine. Okay, so that is the sign. Whoa, wrong. That's the sign of theta. So that means that D, if you just put the sign of theta divided by, by one and, um, and then cross multiply, okay? What you get is that D is a half times sine of theta, okay? So as you guys can see, we can use this uh, software as a whiteboard, even though we deliver lectures by, by Zoom. Okay, so D is a half sine theta. So the question then arises, when will this needle cross the line? And the answer is when the distance X from the center of the needle to the line, to the nearest line is less than D. That means to say, therefore, 
when x is less than a half sine theta. Okay, there's what it is. Okay, I think I need to improve my handwriting. So I'm going to make an effort on that just now, right? So what are the chances of crossing, of the needle crossing the line? Well, to understand this, um, we need to do something. Uh, and, and what we need to do is to look at a bit of probability. First of all, we're going to throw a needle randomly. That means that the value of x is anywhere between zero and y, zero and one, because if you remember the lines are spaced by twice the length of the needle, the needle is of, line of length one. So if the lines are sp spaced twice the length of the needle, the nearest line will always, to the center of the needle, will always be only a maximum of a distance one away. This is the distance to the nearest line. And there's a, a basic principle of probability theory that says that if you have a probability theory, uh, probability and that probability is uniform, that is to say it, it is constant in this range zero to one, then at probability like any other must have an area of one. If you have a, um, a rectangle, which in this case will turn out to be a square of side one with area of one, it must have height one as well. So this probability is one, which is nice because it disappears from our calculations. The next one for theta is more interesting because now, we have that the angle theta is anywhere between zero and pi by two in radians because the needle can go anywhere between zero and 90 degrees, which is pi by two. This is again, the angle to the nearest horizontal. So if it goes past that way, then you get an angle in the other direction, which is less than 90 degrees. Likewise, if it points downwards. <clears throat> so again, the area must be uh, one. And therefore this time the height must be the reciprocal of pi by two, which is two by pi, okay? That's because uh, we have that the requirement that two by pi times pi by two, which is the area of the rectangle is equal to one. So that is two by pi, okay? So what is now the um, probability that this needle is going to cross that line? Well, that probability is going to be an integral of, I mean to say a summation, if you want, a continuous summation over all the possible values of x and all the possible values of theta. So that's represented by this integral over here. Now what I was writing was the integral from zero to pi by two of the, uh, the integral over x, which gives us a half sine of theta times uh, the value of two over pi that comes from there. So I'm now got the integral over here and I got the two over pi, the twos cancel out and I get an integral from zero to pi by two of a one over pi, there it is, times sine of theta. The integral of sine theta is minus cosine. You need to remember the minus sign. And the cosine of pi by two is zero. So this is going to give us cosine of pi by two negative minus minus cosine of zero, which is one, and the sum total is one over pi. So the probability of the needle crossing the line is one over pi, which is what's written over here. The number of crossings over the number of needles is one over pi. Therefore, if you keep track of the number of needles divided by the number of crosses, you get pi. And that's exactly what we found. So what we have shown here through all of this calculation is that by throwing needles onto a piece of paper, rather like this, and if you throw enough of them and they and count the number of crosses and count the number, count the number of needles, you will get the result, which is a very good approximation of pi. And we show that experimentally and the calculation comes from using Pythagoras to give us the height of the opposite side, which is a, a measure of a half and sine of theta and making sure that the distance from the needle to the line is less than a half sine of theta, calculating the probabilities of the angle and of X being in the possible ranges, putting all of that into this integral to look at all the possibilities and then carrying out that integral 
where you first integrate over x to give you the integral is that you integrate your constant over x. So the value of the integral is just the value of this x at the top minus x at the bottom, which gives you half sine of theta, multiply by two pi, that cancels out. And now you have to do the integral over theta, which is minus cos theta between zero and pi by two. And that gives you one, gives you minus cos of pi by two plus cos of zero, which is one. And presto is your answer, okay? so. That shows that it is possible to carry out experiments where the trajectory of each individual object is random, but the aggregate properties are absolutely precisely predictable in sophisticated ways. 